All right. Uh, hello, everybody. Good evening, and welcome to lecture 16 of uh, quantum computation. Uh, in uh, the previous lecture, so we have started discussion of the quantum Fourier transform algorithm. And in order to well explain to you what the quantum Fourier transform is, first I uh, started a brief review of the classical Fourier transform. All right and explain to you that the classical Fourier transform is basically just a transformation of uh, the basis in a vector space. Uh, and as an example, you can consider the momentum representation and the position representation. And an illustration of such a transformation is uh, given by, by an expression of this form. Uh, so, what what makes uh, Fourier transformations useful is the following fact uh, that if you, for instance, consider uh, a signal or a function in the time domain, right? I mean, it doesn't matter. You can call it any anything. You can call it the space domain, the time domain. It, it's irrelevant, right? It's a function on on some space, and you construct the Fourier transform of this function, right? So you go from uh, from this space to its dual, you would say. We here we are calling it omega and t. You can call it whatever you want; it doesn't matter. So what happens is that in this example that I've given you, uh, for instance, uh, if you were to consider, um, let's see one second. This one should be black. Right. So if you consider the black signal, the black curve, right? That corresponds to a sinusoidal constant sinusoid with constant frequency, right? So if you take the Fourier transform of that, what you will get is a single peak at a, that, that value of the frequency, whatever that value of the frequency is. Right? Then I have drawn a green line, which corresponds to a wave which has twice the frequency, right? So now if I uh, perform a Fourier transform of the green signal, I will get a green peak like this, right? At a value of omega, which is twice the value of omega, right? What will happen if I take uh, the green signal, right? And instead of, uh, and add it to the black one, right? Then what will I get? In that case, I will get two peaks. I will get a black peak and a green peak, right? What will happen if I reduce the amplitude of the green uh, peak by half? Well, the height of the uh, green, uh, the contribution from the green peak will be reduced by half in the Fourier transform, right? So what Fourier transform represents, what it shows is the uh, is a spectrum of a given signal, okay? So if you, if you look at uh, the, the spectrum of, of, of any signal, right? And so this is omega and f omega, right? Now, high omega corresponds to high frequency, right? low omega corresponds to low frequency, right? So let's say I have, I have some sort of a, a curve over here, which looks like this, right? What can you say about this signal, right? What you can say is, and where let's say, uh, this is omega naught is equal to, um, let's say 40 kilohertz, okay? What can you say about this signal? Well, you can say, that it doesn't have any frequencies larger than 40 kilohertz, right? And similarly, if you had another signal, uh, which looked like this, you would, you would say that, well, this signal doesn't have anything less than 40 kilohertz, right? Now, uh, maybe you have played around with uh, what is called a, um, Equalizer is available in all the smartphones. You you have an audio player 
right? Or in the old days, it was an analog. So, so there are a bunch of uh, displays. There are a bunch of slots like this. Um, right? And in each, in each one of these slots, you have a slider, which you can move up and down, right? And would have something like, uh, I don't know, uh, five kilohertz over here, 10 kilohertz over here, right? 20 kilohertz over here. And if you wanted to make the sound have more treble, right? Higher treble, what would you do? You would take the 20 kilohertz slider and you would move it up, right? This would increase the treble. And if you wanted to increase the bass, you would increase the amplitude of the lower frequency, right? That's what corresponds to the to the, the bass, right? So this is what what is this do, doing, right? What what you're doing is you are essentially performing a Fourier transform. You're taking your signal. It is being transformed to the Fourier space, right? So, for instance, if, if our original signal looks like something like this in frequency space, okay? What happens when I increase the 5 kilohertz, uh, this thing, right? What will happen is that this part of the signal will become amplified, right? What will happen when I change the 20 kilohertz? Uh, if, I, if I lower the 20 kilohertz, let's say, well, this part of the signal will become, will be de-amplified, right? So the height of this function represents the contribution of each harmonic in your signal. Okay. All right. So again, I mean, most of you are already very familiar with all of this, uh, but let me uh, just show you uh, illustration in in a Jupyter notebook, right? And I have just copied this from uh, this thing, the SciPy, uh, the SciPy documentation. So SciPy is a set of modules, uh, Python modules, Sci, SciPy stands for Scientific Python. And this is, this is FFT, FFT corresponds to fast Fourier transform, okay? So I have imported the FFT module, and its number of uh, sample points, right? And then I have uh, some sample spacing. So then the this command, what does this command do? It produces a set of an array of points which are linearly spaced, right? Starting at zero, right? This is the lower uh, limit. This is the upper limit, right? So that's just equal to the number of sample points times the delta t. And then the total number of points is so when I when I run this, what will I get? I will get an array x which contains 600 points, 600 values. The lowest value starting at zero, right? The highest value being n multiplied by t. So in this case, if you multiply that six by eight, you get three by four. So you start at point zero at zero and point seven five and you divide that interval into 600 points. That's it, that's your x. Then you calculate the sine function, right? So you say np dot sine, okay? So sine some number 50, let's say, times two pi x. But then you add to this another term, which is something like one half, okay? np dot sine 80 times two and pi x. So this corresponds to an angular frequency of 50. But it has a 2.5, right? So what should happen when I perform the 
the fast Fourier transform. So the fast Fourier transform is simply FFT, FFT of Y, right? So this is what I get, right? Uh, this Y axis is my uh, uh, the funct the uh, the Fourier transform. The X axis is my uh, frequency, right? I can see that there are two peaks. One is at 50, right? Because there is one sinusoidal contribution at 50. And then there is a second peak at 80, right? Uh, it's kind of hard to tell from this, but you know, I mean, it seems reasonable. And the amplitude of this second peak is reduced, right? It's not reduced exactly by a factor of one half, but it's reduced, right? So this is this is what is happening. Now, if you want, you can add to this, you can add this, okay? Let's say I add a third harmonic, okay? Something like NP dot sign, let's say 160, okay? All right. Now, well, what, what do I get? I get a third peak at 160, right? So the Fourier transform, what it does is it picks out the the various frequencies which constitute your uh, your signal okay and you can uh, if you want you can look in the scipy documentation on of the uh, fast Fourier transform for uh, for more examples okay. okay any questions about this I will continue with the with my with the theory part. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, we have uh, we have this uh, we have this this expression for our Fourier transform. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to construct the quantum version of this, right? So we want to construct the quantum Fourier transform, right? Well, what I have done here, right? When I have written this expression, this expression is already a, a statement of the quantum Fourier transform. Right, because well, these are these are what what is this? This cat x. This is a uh, basis. Uh, this is an eigenstate of position. Let's say right. This is an eigenstate of momentum. Right for this discrete system. Okay. So this uh, so this is this is a this is a quantum Fourier transform. Right. Now, but to be more uh, clear about that. Uh, let me uh, uh, work in terms of the computational basis, okay? So let's say we have n qubits, or actually uh, not, yeah, big n, small n, on frequency. let's say n, well, n qubits, okay? If you have any then how many basics you have? You have two to the n dimensional Hilbert space, right? And your basis vectors of this Hilbert space can be written in the form y, which like this. So what is this y? y is an integer, right? y is an integer which goes from 0, 1, 2, 2, 2 to the n minus 1, right? So for instance, if you have 4 qubits, you can have 16, you will have 16 states. So 
each state can be indexed with number between zero and 15, right? And what are Y1, Y2, and YN? Well, these are the, the this is the bit representation. This is the base two representation. So YI takes values in zero one, right? So as an example, if I have four qubits, right? And I say four, what does that correspond to in terms of, of bits? Well, you, you can write it out, okay? You get um, zero, uh, um, zero, and then one, and is it one, no, one, four. one, zero, zero, right? This is, Zero, one, zero, one, like this, and so on. Okay, so these are your basis states. So, so any any state uh, in your Hilbert space can be written as a superposition of the basis states, right? So I can write this as um, alpha i, and then i, where i goes from one, sorry, from zero to two to the n minus one, right? Okay, so what uh, is the Fourier transform? Well, the Fourier transform, what it does is, so, what it does is, is precisely what it does here, right? There's, it's not, not, not nothing else. It takes you, you take a linear combination of these states, right? So we write the Fourier transform as follows. So we go from this basis of states I and we take each state and we map it to the state which is given by the following expression. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, oops, 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 oops. This is not two N minus one, uh, this is N. And same thing here, is that right? One second, let me, let me get my, uh, my variables right. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what I was worried about. I'll call the number of qubits uh, small n, or no, no, it's fine. Number of qubits is big n. Yeah, the numbering here has to be, my bad, the numbering of these bits has to be from zero to n minus one, okay? So when you take this sum, the sum goes from zero to n minus one. All right, and you have some some coefficient uh, which we we'll, we'll write down in one second, which will be given by i j. And right, so this is your Fourier transform basis state. Okay, and what is this omega n i j? It's equal to exponent um, i pi i j. Um, and let me get that right again. Uh, yeah, why? Sorry. And uh, since I don't want to confuse, uh, uh, because I have the unit imaginary and things can get confusing. Uh, I'll use JK instead, okay? So omega N JK is equal to exponent two pi I JK divided by N. This is our, uh, uh, this is our coefficient, but this is also a matrix, right? You can see that this is a matrix. What is the dimension? It's an N by N matrix. And if you write down the elements of this matrix, right? So for example, let's consider n is equal to three, right? 
then what are the elements of this matrix so first of all we can take omega with both j and k equal to 1 so we'll just write that as omega and that's equal to 2 pi i by n okay then omega ij right is equal to this omega raised to the power ij right so this is a when i write it like this this is a i'm writing it as a matrix with the indices ij and when i write this expression what i'm saying is uh, that i'm taking the number omega and raising it to the power ij right? so if you take uh, this expression and raise it to the power ij or jk that will just enter the exponent right so what will my uh, this this jk3 look like right now you have to remember that the numbering of the uh, rows and columns goes from 0 to n minus 1 okay so j and k run from 0 to n minus 1 so that means if my matrix is 3 by 3 the first row will be 1 1 1 the first column will be 1 1 then i'll get omega n omega squared right and then i'll get omega squared and omega fourth right so how do i get these values uh for instance uh if if you look at this element uh j is the row so the row is 2 right 0 1 2 0 1 2 0 1 2 Let me give this a different color. Okay, so the row is two, and the column is one, right? So this is omega two. Similarly, if you look at look at this fellow, j is equal to two, k is equal to two, you get omega to the fourth, right? So this is your matrix, and you can check that this is a unitary matrix. so this fourier transform you can express it in the form of a unit operator uh in exactly the same way you can write it as 1 by root n okay so here what i have done is i have written it as a in in the operator uh, expression right so this is my uh, these if if you have a set of basis elements right if you have a set of basis elements basis vectors basis vectors or basis states let's say i i goes from 1 to n right then you from this you can construct a basis for your for operators right what does that operator basis consist of consist of these operators right where i go um well 1 to n or 0 to n minus 1 whatever your uh, convention is so i can take any operator in my state space and i can write it as a sum of these operators right i think i proved this in one of the earlier lectures now how uh, should we understand or visualize what is going on okay so let's consider um a state which is in the computational basis okay so if you have a state in the as an example so you consider again we'll in the four qubit case consider a state of the form uh, which is let's say 1 0 1 0 right now if you want to 
show a block sphere representation of this. So let me go and I'll get my block sphere. Maybe it'll be faster just to draw it. Uh, Okay. Okay. So, how should I? I think of this uh, this state, right? I can think of it in terms of if I if I use the block sphere representation. Right, the first qubit is given by by an arrow pointing in down towards the one state, right? Okay, then the second qubit is given by an arrow which is pointing towards the zero state, right? And uh, your uh, third and fourth uh, qubits, similarly, are, are the same, right? This is your third qubit. And then your fourth qubit as well, the same thing. Let me shift this a little bit here. Okay. So this, this is what... Uh, this state looks like in in terms of the block sphere representation right have 1 0 1 0 right now uh, so and and what happens uh, every time every time you you change the number right so let's say i go from uh, 1 0 1 0 i increment by 1 right one zero one one what do i do i flip one of the qubits right so i can take this here again right So I have flipped this one qubit, right? Now, so this is how we are storing numbers, right? So for instance, which number does this represent? Uh, well, you can read off the number. Uh, this can be written as, uh, remember, so this is the binary representation. In the binary representation, you can take uh, a number, and write it as follows, two to the power k, y k, k is equal to zero to n minus one, like this, right? So uh, this is two, four, eight. So this corresponds to the number 10, right? And this corresponds to the number 11 and so on and so forth, okay? Now, what, what happens in the, uh, when you perform this uh, Fourier transformation, Right. So as an example, we look at the Fourier transform um, for two qubits to gain some intuition of what the Fourier transform does for two qubits. Okay. So what is omega? 
omega is 2 pi i by n, right? n is equal to 2. So this becomes exponent pi i, right? And what is exponent uh, uh, pi i? It's equal to uh, minus 1, right? Now, so what does our matrix look like? If we, if we look at this matrix, the first row and the first column, there's just one, one. And then I have only have one element left here, which, which becomes omega. And in this case, uh, uh, omega is what? Omega is just minus one. Okay. Now you might recognize this. What is this? This is just, this is something that we have seen before. What do we call this matrix? It's the Hardamard gate. Right? So the Fourier transform basis will be given by, uh, I'll have two states. I'll have the plus state and the minus state, right? So the plus state is going to be one by root two, zero plus one, and the minus state is one by root two, zero minus one, right? Now, once again, let me uh, use this block sphere to see what I have. Okay. So did you write uh, the plus and the minus state because it's the basis? Well, uh, I mean, I have, I have, this is my Fourier transform of two qubits. No? And this, this happened, these two states happen to correspond to the plus and minus states in our notation. So the, the Fourier transform is is given by this expression, right? Display, yeah, this expression, right? Uh, understood, sir. Right, and so in our case, our matrix, this omega j k, right, is just given by by this expression. which happens to be the hard amount hmm? case. fine? Yes, sir, yes. Okay. All right, so now let's look at what uh, this looks like in our, in our block sphere representation. Okay, so this is the plus state and the minus state is along the negative x-axis, right? So this is the positive x-axis, this is the plus state, and this is the minus state, okay? Uh, now, uh, let's look at, a, at the next example, because this, this, in this case, uh, things are not so clear. So let's, let's look at the three qubit case. Uh, so for three qubits, for n is equal to three, Omega is equal to x by i by okay, and we'll leave it. We'll leave it uh, like this. Now, what does our matrix look like? One, 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 right? Omega, omega squared, right? Omega squared, and omega fourth. Now, what is omega to the fourth power? If you take this exponent, right, 
you get two, uh, uh, you get eight pi i by three, right? And eight by three can be written as uh, six plus two thirds, right? So this becomes exponent of six pi i, right? Uh, plus two thirds pi i, right? So this again becomes omega. Okay. Now Fourier transforms. And this time I don't have a plus minus. I'll just write. Okay. So we get three zero one two. This is one by root three zero plus omega, right? One plus omega squared two. Now, what uh, what what is going on when I when I have these these phases of omega omega so on? Okay. So if I want uh, to express a number in the Fourier basis, right? What 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 does that look like? Well, let me uh, take my block sphere again. Okay, and if I have some state, if I have a qubit, right? It doesn't matter what the state is. I multiply it by a single phase, right? What does this correspond to? It corresponds to a rotation by the by some angle by around the right? So if I take my state here, it doesn't matter what the state is, right? What is this omega? This is this omega is exponent uh, two thirds i pi, right? So that's 120 degrees. 120 degrees, right? So if I think of this as the zero state, I mean, well, as my original state, let me write it as psi. Then my omega times psi. and omega square times psi is this state. Now, if I want to uh, look at this in a little bit cleaner manner, let me draw a circle representing a cross section of the block sphere. Right? So this is psi. This is omega psi. This is omega square psi, right? And then you multiply again by omega. What happens? You come back to psi. Okay. So, in the computational basis, when we were representing numbers, right? Uh, we were doing so by flipping the the qubit from between in, in the in successive uh, bits. In this case, what we are doing is we are uh, rotating around the z-axis. Okay. Now, what I'll do is I'll just show you the animation, which is much better than what I'll what I'll achieve with drawing. So I'll just show this to you in the browser. So this is in QIS kit. Okay, this is that this is my so a number this counting in the computation basis, right? It happened a little bit fast, but you can see what's going on, right? This is one one, right? Okay. 
then then what happens if you look at it in the fourier basis so in the fourier basis uh, this is uh, this is qubit 0 okay now there are there are four four qubits so remember uh, what is omega omega is 2 pi i divided by 4 uh, which is what pi by 2 right 90 degrees so what happens to uh, uh, my first qubit wait pi by 2 is 90 degrees 90 degrees right so my first qubit it flips so let's see in the state it's it's changing too fast right it would be nice if you could slow it down okay so in the state 0 you saw that all the qubits were pointing in the plus direction right then what happens so in the state 0 all the qubits are in the state plus to encode the state 5 till day 5 okay that is in the fourier basis what do we do we uh 5/16 okay so how many times we have take this uh, uh this circle and divided by by the number of base state 16 in our case right so this this qubit is rotated by uh, this this is the smallest uh, step this is the next smallest step right this is the one after that this is the one after that okay so this is the same as for instance if you if you write down a number uh here right this corresponds to the smallest number if this changes your number changes by one if this changes your number changes by uh by by 2 if this changes your number changes by 4 if this changes your number changes by 8 right one flip corresponds to a change in 8 right uh, so similar uh, a single change a single rotation uh, by an amount given by 2 pi divided by 16 corresponds to the smallest change right then by twice that to the next one next one and then next one so this is the this is the least significant digit and this is the most significant digit okay so i uh, don't know to what extent <laughs> the the order is it flipped now like there will have been we had like 1 2 we are going from right to left the order is is reversed right so in the computational basis you had the lowest bit here and the highest bit here in the fourier basis it's the other way okay well at least in that represent Uh, again how many of you have a, have to go at 6 uh, 6 pm um sir i have to go sir oh, oh, navin right yes, sir uh okay navin would you mind if i if i continued after 6 pm can you uh, sir like uh, uh, 10 minutes okay but uh, sir actually uh, i have uh, meet at uh, 6:15 sir Okay, so ten minutes are fine. That's all I need. Thank you. Okay, so now now let's uh, let's talk about uh, how we get that that representation in terms of that uh, plus and minus oscillating states. Okay, so now and uh, you will not mind, please. The uh, discussion will uh, unfortunately become a little bit technical. Okay. but what will be the main tools uh, in this in what follows it will be the following 
So if you have uh, a number in base uh, base p base p number, right? So for instance, if you have base two, then your digits go from zero to one, right? If you have base p, your digits go from zero to p minus one, right? So you can have base eight. In that case, your highest digit is seven. You have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I have some number in base in base p, right? And this is the uh, this is the number. What does it correspond to? How will I write it in my usual base ten language? Right? I I can write it as follows. I'll write it as uh, so I, and p to the power k k is equal to zero to n minus one. Right? And then maybe I should uh, change the order of my uh, bits. Y one Y. Right. This is what we think of as a number, right? And so, so if you are in binary, right, for p is equal to two, then of course your number y would be equivalent to writing it as uh, y k two to the k. Okay. No need this catch here. Okay. So now let's look at what happens when I consider the QFT quantum Fourier transform on n qubits. Okay. So this will do omega n. Remember, omega n is exponent of 2 pi i by n, right? And then to the power x, y, 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 and we sum over y goes from zero to n minus one, okay? So y is our computational basis and x is our uh, 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 so I would write, I would write this as something like this tilde x. This is my Fourier basis. Okay. Now we can take the expression. This exponential. Uh, it becomes this omega becomes exponent of two pi i by n, right? Multiplied by x y. Okay. Uh, now in this case. Uh, okay, so there's a um, let me let me just uh, make sure that I'm not making any mistakes. Um, right, 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 right. So this n is not the number of yeah this I should. I should write it as small n. Small n qubits gives us a Hilbert space, which is of dimension two to the small n. So, so the capital N that I'm using here, this is the dimension of the Hilbert space. So the capital N is the number of qubit uh, is two raised to the number of qubits. is equal to 2 to the n, where n is the number of qubits. Okay? So this is equal to 1 by root n, n minus 1, 2 by i, x, y over 2 to the n, small n. Small n is the number of qubits. Okay? And now we will use uh, the representation of y
in the uh, this thing uh, in the in this uh, binary representation, right? So the state y can be written in terms of the binary digits in terms of the individual states as this this cat over here. Uh, summation of y k times two to the k, and uh, uh, there is a. I'm I'm following the QIS kit uh, book, but it's uh, there's a little bit of a lack of clarity here. So uh, there are some some problems. So I, I'm fixing those as I go along. So y is equal to this expression. Okay. So in this in this convention. You can see that this is the least significant, right? And this is the most significant. Okay. Now, so what is our is our uh, expression now? We have summation of y goes from zero to n minus one. Okay, and then we substitute this expression into this exponential, right? And so we get exponent of two pi i x over two to the n summation of k is equal to zero to small n minus one y k two to the k times this y zero to y n. So what I have here is I have inside the exponential, right? So if you have a summation like this, what does this become? This becomes a product of of the individual exponents, right? So my expression can be written as one by root n summation of y is equal to zero to n minus one, and then a product, right? So I take this sum inside the exponential and bring it out. So it becomes a product k is equal to zero to small n minus one, and then exponent two pi i x uh, by two n, then y k two k. Okay. 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 Now. uh comes the uh comes the non trivial part so for that let me just show you my notes which i have taken previously okay so what what uh, uh, are we doing here right so this is where we are so far we are at this expression right i've taken the product the sum inside the exponent brought it outside i have a product over k here i've written 2 to the n minus k right because i have a 2 to the k in the denominator in the numerator i brought it down okay so the claim is that this expression can be written in this way okay what is this expression this is a tensor product over my n qubits with each successive qubit being in this state okay so we we'll, we'll look at what this state uh, does exactly and how we get this expression so so okay so we have this uh right so now in this expression what we do is we exchange the order of the sum and the product okay so i put the sum first i have the sum of y from 0 to n minus 1 okay 
Now, what does this correspond to? This, corres this means that I am taking y to run from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4 till 15, right? Let's say. What does this correspond to in terms of the individual bits? Right? The individual bits are given by y0, y1, yn minus 1. Right? So I can write the same expression if I have if I have something like this, sum over y, this is equivalent to taking y0 sum from 0 to 1, y1 sum from 0 to 1, yn minus 1 sum from 0 to 1 of, of this expression. These two expressions are one and the same, right? Because as I iterate over each of the bits, what does that correspond to? That, that corresponds to me iterating over each one of the possible values of y, right? So this is important. Just look at this for a second. If you don't understand it, convince yourself that this is indeed the case. Okay, as an, as an example, you can again consider a very simple example uh, for, uh, for two qubits. So for two qubits, how many states are there? Uh, there, are uh, there are four states, right? What do those four states look like? Uh, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one, right? And how can I write this? I can write this as sum of y0 goes from 0 to 1, y1 goes from 0 to 1, y0, y1, like this, right? So as I iterate y0 and y1 from 0 to 1, I will get each one of these states, right? And on the left-hand left hand side, it will correspond to the sum from 0, 1, 2, 3 in the computational way. So this is the key point, okay? This is the key step. And it's important that you understand. Once you have this step in hand, okay? And to understand uh, the, the fact that this step is needed, I actually had to refer to the lecture notes by Thomas Wong, okay? Which are wonderful. That textbook, that free textbook. It's not. This is not given in Nielsen and Chuang. You won't find it on Wikipedia. And I, I guess, was not smart enough to figure it out. Why zero? Yeah. Or you can alternatively think of this as n qubits but only the first two qubits are uh, non-zero, everything else is zero. So our sum, we have this product of k, k goes from uh, zero to one, n minus one is the number of qubits minus one, so it goes from zero to one. Our sum over y, over all the states, can be written as this, as the sum over the individual bits, right? And we have this exponential y0, y1, okay? Now, again, for simplicity, I will set x is equal to one in this, okay? If you set x is equal to one and you take this product, so when we take this product, what happens? We have this yk, right? 2k. So I get y0 and then y1 divided by 2, right? Then I have, then I perform this sum, right? Now in this sum, there are four terms. So let, let me look at each one of those terms. 
the first term is when both the bits are zero, zero, zero. What happens to this phase? This phase becomes one. So I get zero, zero, right? When I set y zero, the first bit to zero and the second bit to one, right? So this phase is zero and we phase of two, right? And then time zero one. Then when I have one zero, what happens? I get a contribution from this guy also. Right, so I get two pi i. This just gives me uh, what does this give me? This gives me zero, right? Because well, it, the second bit is zero. And then finally, when I have one one, I get three pi i. So what 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 does it look like? Now you can see there is a pattern, right? So so are I we like one, rotating by pi? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So I get one here exponent pi i in the second term, exponent two pi i in the third term, exponent three pi i in the fourth term. Right? And now you can factor this. So I take the first two terms, I factor out this zero qubit, okay? So I can write the first two terms in this way, zero, tensor superposition of this zero and one state, but with this phase factor phi i. In the second, in the, in the next step, I can take the one qubit, the first qubit one, and I can take exponent two pi i common. And I can again write this as zero plus exponent phi i one. Right, so these two expressions are are the same, right? And now you can take these terms common. So I get zero plus one for the first qubit with a phase factor of e to the two pi r. For the second, I get zero plus e to the pi. Qubit and this is the second qubit, right? This is the first qubit and the second qubit. This is when x is equal to one. So in general, right? If you have n qubits, what will be be the picture like? The picture will be the following: the first qubit in this state, the second qubit in this state, and so on till the n minus one qubit, right? Will correspond to the uh, minus state zero minus one, right? So each one of these states you can see will will correspond to a state uh, to a rotation around the z axis, right? By this phase factor, and this is for the for the case when uh, so if I say that n is equal to two, what do I get? I get zero plus one and zero minus one. Right. Okay. And so finally, I put the x back into the expression. So when x is not equal to one, in that case, what does my expression look like? Right. It looks like this. Right. Exponent. I insert the reinsert the non you know non trivial value of x times a pi okay so and and Naveen I apologize I know that uh, Naveen might have left maybe or maybe you're still here uh, but I hope that you can uh, watch whatever is uh, that you missed. You can watch it online, okay? But I wanted to finish this uh, and leave one coherent uh, one whole
zero plus exponent two pi i x divided by two to the k. Okay, so this is our this is what the QST uh, does. Okay. And once we have this expression, then we can construct a, a, a quantum circuit, which is efficient. Now see, the, the thing is, the issue is that if you were to construct a quantum circuit out of this original unitary, right? What is this unitary? It's an N. It's a Right. So you would have to uh, find some way to decompose this into products of uh, simpler gates, right? Into products of two qubit gates. And the th the uh, this quantum Fourier transform uh, would not be uh, would not be efficient. It wouldn't really give us any quantum advantage if our circuit uh, required more gates or more steps than other classical computation. So, however, when we express uh, our Fourier transform in this manner, right? What does our circuit look like? Our circuit and in following way, as we already So, this is the first qubit the second qubit, then the nth qubit, oops, sorry. So what do you do? You act on the first qubit uh, to perform you, with a Hadamard, right? What does the Hadamard do? Uh, and you take all your qubits to start in the zero state, right? So the Hadamard converts it into the plus state, right? This converts it into zero plus one by root two. But now what you want to do is you want to perform a rotation on this qubit, right? And this rotation has to depend. So, so here you perform a rotation, but this is a controlled rotation, which depends on the value of the system. Then, uh, then there will be another control rotation, which depends on the value of the third qubit and so on. Okay. And then when you are done with this, with the first qubit, you'll start with a second qubit. You'll put a hard amount. Then again, you will have a bunch of control rotations. Like this. Okay. And then at the end, uh, you would have to uh, put swap gates. And uh, so we'll talk about this in more detail in tomorrow's class. Okay. And the, the thing is that this QFT is very important, right? It's, it's a central algorithm in quantum computation. Why? Because this QFT is required for something known as phase estimation, right? And phase estimation is what is required for Shor's algorithm. Okay, and what is Shor's algorithm? Remember Shor's algorithm is the one which holds out the real promise and power of quantum computing, right? the ability to factor large numbers in polynomial time, right. which would break all currently existing uh, encryption schemes on which our entire uh, internet and transaction system is based, right? So along with quantum computation, right? In, in parallel with the development of quantum computers, people are developing a quantum network where quantum encryption is used. Right, because only quantum encryption can be can be not broken 
by quantum computing right so our classical internet will be replaced by a quantum internet maybe 10 years from now maybe 20 years from now right but it's already happening in small steps and uh and and what we actually have I, i believe that people have done it for very small numbers like 35 or something like that to show that 35 is can be factored into 5 and 7 or something like that right then you can uh, apply it in there there are other classical algorithms can be which can be speeded up tremendously okay and then after shows algorithm there is grover's algorithm and after grover's algorithm there is a random walk quantum random walk so we'll talk about all of these things okay so i'll stop here thank you for your patience and uh, thank you for your time don't forget to like subscribe and press the bell icon okay questions and i realized that this whole discussion is quite dense uh so you really have to sit down and uh, work work things out so uh, can i have uh, show that part in which that the ones that you made yourself the that were predetermined uh, so what which part sorry the the predetermined notes that you used to show ah yeah 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 sure i'll i'll share all these notes with you don't worry just just a little down hmm okay so can i have, i have a doubt yeah 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 go ahead yeah sir so uh, i don't know if uh, in the sense uh, in in my classical fourier uh, transform Uh, my mm-hmm. original signal is in time domain right we find the mm-hmm. time how the signal changes with time and then once we do fourier transform we get it in its uh, frequency uh, domain right but here uh, the originally my uh, co- we have mm-hmm. a probability a probability of uh, you know the qubits being in different uh, positions right so when i do my uh, fourier mm-hmm. quantum fourier transform it would be wrong to stay, mm-hmm. tell that it's in uh, some frequency domain or anything right so is there no no it is it is it is uh, it is absolutely in 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 a you know frequency domain but originally it was not changing with respect to time right mm-hmm. my original uh, uh, qubits they were not changing with respect to time no right? no it doesn't no no it doesn't matter like i mean uh, whether something like in i you take signal you take a snapshot of a signal right and uh, that contains some set of 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 data points now you can interpret uh, these data points as corresponding to something that is changing in time but you can also represent correspond to something changing in space right something that is frozen it doesn't matter okay whether something is changing in time or space i mean it's not like that doesn't mean that you cannot do a a spectral decomposition of that signal you can right so if i have some 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 landscape some to, some topo some topography right okay? i can i can do a fourier decomposition of that and that will tell me whether my landscape is very jagged okay okay uh, so so when i make my conclusions uh, like in my for year when i make my conclusion or, or, or once again once again one second one second one second or as in another example you can take an image right you can take an image a 2 by 2 array of uh, 256 numbers at each in each array in each point 
and do a Fourier transform of, of this image. When you do a Fourier transform, right, what do you get? You get a distribution which shows you uh, which uh, color I give greater nothing dependent in this. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. I understood. And you were saying something else. I don't know. If, if, if. Yeah, yeah. Like I was, yeah, it's same thing. Like, no, another way I was just saying that uh, just like what conclusions were coming in with the time, it will be the same conclusions, but in with instead of time, it will be space. So it's the same. Yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Okay. All right, so again, I will stop the recording here. And uh, if people have any questions, please ask. And I can see that a bunch of people are meeting and that's, that's fine, I suppose, because uh, 